88.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, 97.5 K248BR in Santa Cruz and online at kpfa.org. The time is 1 p.m. Stay tuned next for your own health and fitness. Welcome to your own health and fitness. I'm health integrationist Lena Berman with Jeff Fawcett, Ph.D. We come to you weekly with a critical, independent voice on the politics and practice of health. I'm often asked about how to protect young children from the nuclear isotopes that are drifting over from the Fukushima disaster. My answer always includes the revelation that although we can't control our exposure to this drift... There is another form of radiation over which we still can have some control. Nuclear radiation is ionizing like x-rays. Most people know about its dangers. What's less well known is that non-ionizing radiation, wireless technology, has almost identical health consequences, although with slightly different mechanisms. Interesting, too, is that human DNA can sometimes recover from the effects of ionizing radiation, but non-ionizing radiation damages DNA's attempt to repair itself, among its other disquieting health consequences. Since the government, the military, and the telecoms have a big stake in blanketing the entire planet in wireless broadband, plans for which are progressing rapidly, it's time people got educated on how to protect themselves and future generations. Additionally, trees and other creatures we share this planet with are affected, too. Too bad they won't be able to benefit from what you will hear today in this hour, all those little creatures. But we will. Stay tuned for Electronically Quiet Home. My guest today is Michael Newert, who holds a bachelor's degree in engineering from the University of Wisconsin and a master's degree in psychology from Sonoma State University in California. He's also a California State licensed electrical contractor and has been testing and reducing electromagnetic fields for clients since 1992. Michael's work has included the design of special low EMF products, the shielding of various EMF sources from smart meters to electric, electrical transformers, the design and the installation of special low EMF electrical wiring systems for homes and offices, the troubleshooting and repair of wiring issues caused by high electromagnetic fields and buildings and extensive writing about the subject. Michael has over 22 years of practical experience working with clients who report sensitivity to electromagnetic fields and is himself a person who is sensitive to EMFs. He is presently training several apprentices and has authored many articles and websites including emfcenter.com and emfinfo.org. And we'll put those links on our website. Welcome to you, Michael. Thanks for coming into our studio. Yes, hello, Lena. It's a pleasure to be here today. So, so um, one of the things that one of the things that people are constantly confused about is this issue of we talk about EMF and that's electromagnetic frequencies, but within that, there's all these other frequencies that are irritating. So. I think people forget that just electricity itself can be irritating, and then we have the radio frequency now that's being layered on here. So why don't you give us a little quick lesson about low-level electric fields, what they are, how they're created, and why the body is so sensitive, how it's an antenna. Oh, great. Yeah, the um, the term electromagnetic field is a, is a broad term, includes a lot of different kinds of EMFs. Um, and the, the types of EMFs that have been around the longest for us are the kinds related to electricity. So this is magnetic fields and electric fields from wiring and power lines and transformers, things like that. The kind of thing that uh, back in the 70s and 80s, there were studies started starting to find health effects, for instance, in homes near power lines, more leukemia in children, things like that. That's one whole type of EMF. And then there's another whole range of EMFs that we call radio frequencies. And you'll hear the abbreviation RF for radio frequencies. That is another whole set of EMFs that are used for communication usually. Um, the EMF can be modulated in certain ways that it can carry information. Um, it used to be that most of the radio frequencies were analog. 
uh, type of uh, rather relatively smoother, kind of cleaner, more natural type of fields. But these days, everything's going digital, and the digital radio frequencies um, appear to be much more troublesome for the body. A lot of people report much more problem with the radio frequencies when they're digital. Even if they're not that strong, it doesn't take a lot of strength for a digital type of field to, to cause biological effects. So isn't this it really radar? Aren't we? Isn't this all this wireless stuff essentially radar? Radar is is a type of radio frequency. Yeah. So originally that was the original radio frequency that in EM radio. So, but now the frequencies have been really filled in. So you have not just TV and radio and ham radio and and radar, but you have all kinds of other digital technologies, um, cell phone frequencies, Wi-Fi frequencies. Um, some of the frequencies are relatively common that are opened up for all kinds of devices that use in the home. Some are more specialized and reserved for certain military purposes, emergency, police, fire, things like that, too. Uh, the other thing to remember is that there's people often say, but the sun is electromagnetic and we're we're wired, literally we're wired to yeah. be able to handle this. It's natural. So what's the problem here? But a lot of it has to do with the way these fields yeah. are being uh, delivered. You know, they're pulsed, yes. they're cycling, and there are also many layers of them where there wasn't before. Yes. Um, in fact, one of the reasons that the artificial EMFs that we create, things like radar or the Wi-Fi for a wireless router, for instance, these are um, artificially created EMFs, but the Earth and our environment has some natural electromagnetic fields, and our body picks up some of those natural electromagnetic fields. Not well understood, but we do know um, there are studies showing that, for instance, the, the pineal gland is influenced by some of the frequencies that are very close to electrical power frequencies. So you have a 60 hertz field from electrical power, perhaps competing with some of the natural signals of the planet, like the what's called, some people might have heard something called the Schumann resonance. And that's a natural magnetic frequency of the Earth. Very low exposure level, but our brains do pick it up and the pineal gland responds to it. And it's part of the, the body's um, circadian rhythm cycle determining night from day well and in fact people uh, who are sensitive do better sleep better when they take melatonin usually because of this disruption that's yes. happening yeah yes so so there's also um there's also another well the other thing is that these extremely low frequencies from what i can tell from the years that we've been covering this are difficult because the body is electric and it's very difficult for the body to discern when it's a low level frequency that's constant whether it's self or other so it has a kind of autoimmune disrupting effect uh which is also not well understood yet but it's definitely happening yes um, that's where the um the old model of how all these different kinds of electromagnetic fields could affect us was a thermal model, which had to do right. with the stronger the field, the more energy, the more it heats the body. But it turns out all the studies now are showing non-thermal effects. It's more like interference. It's like you're driving your car, you're listening to the radio, and all of a sudden something else is interfering with that signal. So it's more of an interference type of effect having to do with our bodies are very bioelectronic. Uh, but this is something that isn't uh, this, the scientific sort of mind um, hasn't grasped that model yet. It's pretty much on this thermal model. Yeah, it's starting to, though. There's all these 1,800 new studies in the revised uh, Bioinitiative report, which is available at bioinitiative.org if people want to read them. And there, there's lots of new studies showing lots of harm in lots of different ways from yes. these fields. So yes. one of the things that also is irritating is that... Um, the, the, I remember Oli Johansson from Sweden, who is the dermatologist who, who started doing work on electrosensitivity and started testing people and noticed that their body reacted, whether they physically reacted or not, that there are heat shock proteins that are developed, that people go into a stress response, even if they're not feeling it. And in, in Sweden, they noticed just with the, just the adding electricity to the rural areas that the incidence of cancer went way up. Yes. Uh, and then when they added FM radio, AM radio, it went up, and then it went up even higher. So each yes. each blanket has in ca caused increase, uh, and they do pay attention in some parts of Europe. But there's also something called dirty electricity. Of course, we've covered a lot on the show. But you are you're using the um, metaphor of Ebola and AIDS. Yeah, maybe I the 
dirty electricity is a, is a confusing issue, and it's rather complicated. Um, so I think of um, a lot of the approaches right now for dirty electricity are to put in filters, which can be very helpful in some situations. But I think of it as kind of like if you have um, if if you have an AIDS or an Ebola virus. If you have the disease, yes, you want to do something uh, to treat that. But a lot of the health uh, around something like a virus like that is avoiding the contact in the first place. And it turns out that one of the main ways that dirty electricity gets from the wiring system around you, the wires, the cords, the computer, is through the air, through a low-frequency field. So um, typically it's both the magnetic field and the electric field from the wiring, but a lot of it's the electric field. So when you put in a filter for the dirty electricity, you're reducing the dirtiness that's coming along with this electric field. But if you can actually get rid of the electric field, then the dirtiness is not getting out of the wires too. So a lot of times you'll people who are sensitive to this kind of thing, or if you're looking at your health, um, it can be helpful to actually reduce the fields in addition to trying to clean up the dirtiness aspect. Yeah, well, that's where you come in, but, but the problem is that increasingly it's impossible for people to do that because they're being exposed uh, to things that they don't have control over. I mean, there's, there's been an exponential increase of the number of towers, and they're now putting new and different forms of wireless broadband and things on that are blanketing areas. So yes. I noticed that I never felt good around those filters until um, all of our electricity, because of the smart meters that are being put in everywhere, suddenly became very dirty, and I couldn't live in I just couldn't handle the yes. house at all. But when I put the filters in, they work beautifully. And we had Dave, Dave Stetzer on, and there, yes. uh, some people, as you say, don't feel good around them. Most people I know feel better once things get really bad. Yes, yes. So, they yeah. can be helpful. So a lot of times, if, the per, if a person is helped, well, this is what I find in my um, experience with people, um, not always, but a lot of times, if... Re, if putting in the filters helps, because that's cleaning up the electric fields, reducing those electric fields helps even more. And, there, and the nice thing about the electric fields in the sense of what you can do about it is this is typically the EMF that you have the most control over. Because most of it is your own wiring and things near you, so it's not so much, this case, the cell tower or the power line outside. It tends to be these wires in your wall, for instance. that might be, for instance, just a foot from your head and you're near your bed where you're sleeping. Okay, so there's some remediation that can be done yes. even if you're getting bombarded from the outside. Yes. Okay, <laughs> that's good to know. One of the ways we think about it, too, is sometimes when you're having have one kind of EMF you can control, you try to reduce some of the EMFs that you can yeah, exactly. to reduce your total exposure load. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to move on to earthing because it's a very complicated issue. Uh, the idea of uh, putting yourself in contact with yeah. the Earth's natural field is a good idea, except that increasingly the fields of the earth are now polluted with all the stuff unless you live way out in the middle of nowhere your field is uh but before they do that before i do that let's let's just very quickly say that this is your own health and fitness i'm lena berman and jeff fawcett is sitting by here and we are doing a show in studio with michael newert n-e-u-e-r-t who uh, helps people uh, fix uh, homes and businesses and things, uh, helps to reduce some of these fields and help you figure out what might be causing problems. The show is called The Electronically Quiet Home. So we're moving on to this idea of earthing. Um, And as I said, since the earth is now polluted with towers and smart meters and everything's going to ground, um, what's... Why don't you give us your opinion about that? Because people are always yes. saying, should I buy one of these earthing mats? I tried one. Yes. It made me sick. Yes, yes. <laughs> so um, earthing, like a lot of things with electromagnetic fields, um, earthing is something that will be, it actually is a, almost an amazing healing miracle for some people. And for other people, um, I have several clients who feel it is the cause of their electromagnetic sensitivity. Wow. And it actually makes sense um, because there are good places and times to earth and there may be bad places to earth. So basically, I think of two types of earthing. There's what I would call natural earthing. Um, this is where you go to a clean environment where there aren't many fields Good around you. finding that place. Right. <laughs> you put your feet on the ground. This is something um, in all the 22 years I've been working with, way back, you know, even 22 years ago, my first clients were saying, oh, yeah, you know, the best thing is I go out in the backyard, I put my feet in the ground, and I go to the park, but there's places I can't go. I can't go to the park That's over right. there where there's power lines. That's right. And I can't go where there's that cell tower. That's right. So what it turns out, so this is so natural earthing in a clean environment tends to be very healing for a lot of people. I agree. 
And then there's artificial earthing where you try to do the do earthing, but often inside a building. You try to bring a, an electrical connection from the ground, from the earth, to you. It could be um, a pad at your feet that's conductive or a conductive bed pad, things like that. And what I've found what in my experience with my clients is that if they're doing this in a very clean environment where the radio frequencies are quite low, where the electric fields, these ELF electric fields are quite low, then offing earthing in the house helps too. But once you start having significant electric fields or um, radio frequencies in the house, which is typical for most houses, you're grounding your body in that sense. You're, you're actually making yourself a little more like a lightning rod. A lightning rod is basically a, a conductive material, your body's conductive, which is connected to a wire to the earth, so that stray electricity from the, from, uh, and, and power from the lightning strike will be channeled through that to the ground. This is really good. So when you earth yourself, if there's a field around, you can actually be the collector of That's that right. field. And when you do a body voltage measurement, which is, it's just a particular kind of test, you can get fooled um, to thinking you're in a clean environment because when, um, when you ground yourself, you will not measure a body voltage. But what, if you had the right instrument, you would actually measure a current flowing across your skin to the place where you're making contact mm. to the earthing mat and to the earth. And there's actually a little current there, and you could do that. You could set up an experiment, put in a little um, uh, um, current meter there and, and measure that current. It's small, but the currents in our, the biological currents in our body are small. So this is big for the body. Um, so that's kind of what I find. There's, there's other things involved, but generally you have to be really careful yep. if you're doing an artificial earthing. And so I've had many, several clients, some have written me and they've test, kind of testified and say, how can you sell these products? Mm -hmm. Well, the products work great in some case, cases, but in other cases, it's actually probably turned them into antenna, more fields mm -hmm. kind of collecting on them. And it, it's kind of like they're being the garbage can for the fields in the air, draining the air, and it's kind of going through them. See, that's the way a lot of the shielding works for some of these fields it's like the garbage that's what i was cans. thinking the it shielding picks up yep the, yeah and and this way you're shielding perhaps other things if you stand like a person's earthing and you stand near them your field will be probably less because they're collecting a little more no. <laughs> so that's a better shield than a piece of aluminum foil <laughs> <laughs> if you get enough people standing around right, you, you just yeah. have to put somebody who's earthing yeah. on your head yeah. yeah yeah okay so so well it actually does g flow nicely into the idea of shielding because some people have because well first of all I'm, i have to say say are you finding that there are any places that people live now that isn't like in some place where there's less population or something that people have a clean environment because i don't mm -hmm. i haven't been to that place it depends on the degree okay so um for for very sensitive people mm. it's it's difficult getting very very difficult to do moving in the country in in a in a valley you know in a canyon kind of thing right trying to find these unique places and even that's tricky because you never know what's going to happen down the road yep exactly then there's the worst case here in san francisco you're near the sutro tower you've got all the greatest wi-fi repeaters yep. and everything so there's quite a variation so Typically, as you get away from the dense urban areas where there's so many cell towers every two blocks kind of thing, um, you, you get into better environments. But still, when you're in a standard, standard neighborhood, residential, suburb, you typically, even if you're maybe a mile from a cell tower, typically you have your neighbors smart wireless meter. and the smart meters. So it becomes the, basically the, the, the rough formula is to get away from the EMFs that are around you, distance from neighbors. So often you tend to go a little more rural as you, as much, as much rural as you're comfortable with space between your house and other houses. And that's, that's the first step. Um, and the closer, the denser you get, the worst. So the worst case and what really gets trouble is people who are living in the type in apartment buildings and condominiums where you're sharing walls with other people. Well, and there's a bank of smart meters on the building too. And there's a bank. Of, yeah, I have a client like that. She's sharing the wall. All the smart meters on our, are on her end of the condo. And even though we did a shielding job on her place before she moved, let's try. She said, let's try shielding it. The shielding wasn't good enough. She needed to move because with all of mm. those sources, shielding is never 100 percent. No, and in fact, some people get worse when you shield. Shielding is tricky, and it gets into the same kind of the same issues with earthing. Sometimes it works better than others. Well, and there's also the question of uh, if you shield, uh, you have to be very careful that the inside of your building you're not using anything that's generating radio frequencies. And if you just put in 
the new LED lights that they used to be the LEDs that first came out were pretty quiet. Mm, yes. And now they've changed the circuitry, and most of them are dimmable. You do not want a dimmable one. You can sometimes find a non-dimmable. But even so, uh, I like yeah. the uh, AM radio test myself because mm-hmm. I know that mm-hmm. that's a frequency that I react to. It's a very high frequency. You take an AM radio, you, you tune it off the station to the top of the dial, and you hold it up to something, and if it starts shrieking, you know that you've got this very high uh, It's a noisy frequency. source, yeah. It's a really high frequency. And the LED uh, lights, the new ones, are extremely noisy. So if you put them in, you want to have them way above your head so you have drop-off from them. But mm-hmm. it's just people, uh, a lot of people are still using CFLs. They're still using compact fluorescent bulbs, which are extremely which are irritating. Which are typically worse than the LEDs. And then if you shield, oh yeah, well, they're about the same almost now. Mm-hmm. The LEDs are getting pretty bad, but they're really bad, uh, yeah. the, the, the compact versions. But mm-hmm. then you put in shielding, and you've got all this stuff that can't get out. It's bouncing around right. and reflecting back at you. It'll actually depend. So this is where shielding gets a little tricky because these different electromagnetic fields react different depending on the frequency. It's, it's kind of like the different colors of the rainbow. Um, so a lot of the – if you think of radio frequencies – in kind of two general compartments. There's a there's a lower end, lower frequency end, which is like EM radio and ham radio. Then you have a higher frequency end, which is all the digital things. So when you start getting these higher frequencies, the um, the shielding material will typically be a reflector, like a mirror. Um, it also happens in the lower frequencies, but when you get in the lower frequencies, there's more interacting with the shielding. So sometimes more and more the shield even becomes like a secondary source. So what happens with some of the lower frequencies, and this especially happens when you get down into the when you get down into the, what we call the ELF, the power frequencies for for electricity. But the um, the lower frequency radio frequencies will kind of they'll interact more with the, typically a metal that's the shield, and the 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 shielding material will act like a new antenna and re-radiate. It's called the secondary antenna effect. So what happens is a lot of times in shielding situations, if you have, say, a bed shield around you, kind of a canopy mm-hmm. around your whole bed, being sold, you'll yeah. typically get fairly good reductions in the center of that canopy, maybe 90 95% reduction, maybe 99% reduction. But as you go toward the edges, you might actually get higher fields at the edges. So, for instance, a lot of canopies are kind of small and your head is there and maybe six inches away is the canopy. Your head, in some cases with a canopy, can get a higher exposure just because oh. of the canopy. So, there's, there's, so shielding is quite, never quite perfect. Oh. And then you add in the lower frequencies, you really need to ground that shielding material because if you don't ground it, it tends to actually amplify the fields. Mm-hmm. So it gets kind of complicated. And what I find a lot of cases when shielding doesn't work, a lot of times it isn't grounded properly and also um, it is and then you can it, it gets difficult and just like you said once you shield a room really well you do what we call a fairly cage where you have the shielding material uh, ceiling walls windows you can't have any opening basically you keep the fields out but the problem is then the higher frequencies they tend to bounce back so if you have anything inside even a computer with just a little bit of the radio frequency that comes from the electronics that's inherent in anything electronic especially computers that doesn't go out the window like it used to now it gets reflected back yep. so it's hard to predict how you're going to do in yeah. a shielded room well and and you know a lot of people say oh well you know I'll just wear shielded clothing <laughs> I'll just wear these these shirts these underwear things that yes. have fabrics that have uh, metal threads in them no one will notice that I'm wearing it. I'm going to wear uh, things on my hands when I'm using my computer. I'm going to wear a hat. Yes. Um, but as you pointed out, which is very important to know, is that that can cause the fields to collapse on your skin. Yeah, so a couple of things there. If you're doing a shielded clothing, one of the first problems is it's only a partial covering. Um, one of the most effective things that I've seen when you're doing clothing is the head. I have a client who's a doctor, very affected, and he found that if he wears, he wears, he actually wears it's kind of like a beekeeper's hat. Yeah, that's what it's, I've heard, beekeeper yeah, hat. It's a little more than just like a, like a cap on your head. It's got to come over his face and down to about his shoulders. And he can pretty much manage with that because he's found out that it's the exposure to his head that seems to bother him. So for some people, that might not be enough coverage. For some, it might. But he also, so besides um, the, the, trying to cover as much as you can. The other issue is for, um, it'll depend what kind of environment you're in. If you're in an environment with a, in a building with a lot of electric fields, this is these ELF 
the power um, wiring electric fields again, that shielding will interact with that field also. You can make it worse. So sometimes if there's high electric fields, you're amplifying it, and that's why sometimes the things feel better for worse. And one of the one of the um, things that helps a lot of people, if you do wear some kind of shielding cloth, clothing, um, make sure you wear something that's something between a layer of clothing between the shield and your skin. Oh, good idea. Something that so you don't have electrical contact. Yeah. Because once you touch the material, it's kind of like you've made your your skin bigger. It's going to give you a bigger surface now. You can collect more fields. So you're actually kind of making yourself a bigger collector rather than shielding yourself. So that's something that's kind of critical in a lot of cases. You wear, I mean, ideally you'd be wearing plastic uh, because that's not conductive to electricity, but that's going to feel awful. So typically some kind of dry cotton material. Once you start perspiring and gets wet, it'll start to conduct electricity. Yeah, Yeah. the moisture does. But um, the other problem here is that uh, wiring now increasingly is carrying so much data and so much uh, stuff on it from both PG&E's smart meters. Uh, yes. Well, they're all over the world, smart meters. So mm-hmm. smart meters are carrying it, and they're putting smart meters in rural areas where there's no way that there's no infrastructure, so they have to come out and read it, yeah, but it still wish. carries it on the on the lines. It yes. still carries RF. Yes. Um, and then there's just, you know, everything in the house and all the wiring, your phones, even if you have a landline, are carrying as an antenna, they become antennas. Yes. So the whole house lights up. Yes. Because of the ambient exposures um, from what what's happening with uh, the power. The power is no longer yes. clean. It's not. It used to be that PG&E power, because they condition their lines a little bit, um, used to be pretty clean stuff. And then they start putting in these uh, smart meters, and wham, you know, I'm sure when you go in yes. and start, I mean, I. I can just walk into a room where there's just, if there's a smart meter nearby, my heart starts pounding. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. how I notice it. But you must be finding just the just out uh, off off the charts because that's apparently what other people like Cindy Sage have found doing meter reading, meter mm-hmm. using meters, not mm-hmm. being a meter reader. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're tur- you're talking about dirty electricity. It's a really important issue. Um, we've always had. The dirty electricity is basically where you have radio frequencies that are being carried along the power line frequency fields. So normally, yeah, in, in, and most of the radio frequencies are being introduced by something electronic. So a big source is the inverters for solar systems, for instance, yeah, or some I, of the worst. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but anything, that, that's just a big piece of electronics. Um, but any electronics, the power supply for your computer, the power supply for the LED bulbs, the electronic power supply for the um, fluorescent lights, all these little like, electronics tend to take little sips of electricity in a way that tends to cause radio frequencies to be added to the signal. And in some cases, that's less of an issue if the fields coming from the wiring and things around you are fairly low. But if those fields are high, like they are in certain situations, then that amount of dirty electricity is high, too. One of the interesting things will be that, in fact, like if you do a measurement and you look with a oscilloscope at some of the dirty electricity signals on the wiring, the voltage on the wires, if you if you then look at a person who has a, who's in that electric field from those wires, you'll see those same radio frequencies on their skin as the, as the field collapses onto their skin. Boy, because, the, boy. because the human body is actually a um, an ideal antenna for picking up a lot of these electromagnetic fields, especially the electric fields from wiring and power lines. The body's actually a perfect antenna; picks it up very well. No doubt about it. Um, we're going to have to do a, a brief musical break, but uh, before, uh, w- what I want to cover when we come back, because we did call this the electronically quiet house or home, uh, is we certainly should go over. You, you, can, you can explain, I think, or you can send people to a link to find out how to make a body voltage meter for themselves to do this. And then, of course, we've discussed the AM radio test. So when we come back, maybe we'll hit that, and then we'll start talking about what kind of control practically speaking, people have in their homes. Now we understand what they need to control for. Um, This is your own health and fitness. I'm Lena Berman. I'm in studio with Jeff Fawcett and Michael Newert, who is a uh, helps people remediate uh, the electromagnetic fields in their homes and and offices and things like that and helps them to to make a healthier environment. Uh, We're going to play a little music here, and we will be back with this discussion of the electronically quiet home. In just a moment, stay with us.
Visit our website, yourownhealthandfitness.org, all spelled out for easier extended access to our over 600 archive shows with our library card feature. Find a free stream of this week's show, our book, and lots more at yourownhealthandfitness.org. If you need to reach us, please do it by email at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at yourownhealthandfitness.org. We are in studio with uh, Michael Newart, and we are doing a show called The Electronically Quiet House. Michael, did you want to give out some websites for people to look at? Sure. Um, my informational website is emfinfo.org, and that has um, basically information about EMF, some things you can do. One of the things on there that might be interesting people um, is there are directions about how to make your own body voltmeter. So it's a relatively inexpensive thing to test because you can use a standard electrician's voltmeter from a place like Radio Shack or a Home Depot and add a few wires and make yourself a body voltmeter. And and so that's a, something that's usually affordable and that directions to do that are free on that website. Yeah, the really important part there is to ground the grounding on the it. The grounding yeah. is, is important. Yeah. Almost you know, whether you're shielding, earthing, the grounding, the way you ground it. We were getting into more details about shielding. It's even what you ground to that... Um, that can make a difference. Um, so that's a site that has some information, and also I have a site, emfcenter.com. Uh, that is where there's information about renting the test meters, buying the test meters, that kind of thing, and some of the okay. work I do. So the first one, again, is? emfinfo.org. So the emfinfo.org is an informational website, yes. and the other one is actually commercial. Re- commercial. Okay, mm-hmm. great. And... Um, Lest we get, we can go back to the body volt meter, I guess, then and grounding. Some more details about grounding, but maybe first, if you agree, we should move on to just what things people actually have control over. I mean, we're yes. we're discovering that it's very hard. Like we had a refrigerator yes. die, uh, mm-hmm. never at the best time, mm-hmm. and I was really worried because everybody, all the other sort of researchers and, and experts that we talked to said, oh, well, all the appliances are being equipped with antennas now, and they're all more digital. They've uh, Appliances in general are using digital controls now. They yes. all have these ice makers with digital. It's very digital. Yes. So I was really worried. Um, what happened was I just took a risk, and I called... Uh, well, not to give them a free pitch, but uh, it, I just chose to call Best Buy. I had called around, and I called Best Buy, and I got a really smart young man in the appliance thing, and I said, I want an electromagnetic, just a regular electric refrigerator. I want no digital, nothing. I want the fewest circus board. Circus board. I want a really quiet refrigerator. And he said, well, yes. in fact, there is there is one. You know, this, there's this whirlpool and... And this and that, and it's a, an energy star, and we thought, oh, great. Mm-hmm. And we got it, and it is very quiet. It's really good. I mean, it both is fairly quiet, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you know, it's, but beyond that, it, it's, you know, with the AM radio test anyway, yeah. it's pretty good. It doesn't seem to have antennas or anything, but they outfitted the inside of the refrigerator with LED bulbs, and they made it look like a wet bar, you know, with, it was very beautiful inside, but as soon as I opened the refrigerator and they all went, you know, they all lit up, I got a wave, like a headache that almost knocked me on my feet, and I thought, okay, and they can't be removed, but Dr. Fawcett here, who is brilliant, just sat and thought about it for a second, and he said, well, we just have to tape over the thing that makes them go on on the door. Oh, yes. So we have a dark refrigerator, yes. but if you have light in the room, you can see yes. what's going yes. on. And now it's totally silent. So what I'm saying yes. is yes. when you buy yes. appliances, you do have to make a point of explaining to people that you don't want all this extra stuff because, among other things, they're trying to put smart meter-enabled yes. things in there. Because yes. don't you need to check your refrigerator from your cell phone? <laughs> right. That is, it's like everything, it's getting trickier to be clean with electromagnetic fields. So um, before we even get into like how you would test to see what you have, yeah, the number one thing is when you're getting anything is to make sure, the big thing is to make sure it doesn't have any wireless in it. There's a lot of, you know, so this would be wireless perhaps for things like the refrigerator, um, talk, using maybe Zigbee or some system to talk to the smart meter. There's a lot of choices yet, but it's 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 like finding a wired router now rather than non-wireless yeah, router. Yeah. They're they're still available, mm-hmm. but people will think 
you, you'll you say, I don't want a wireless router, and they'll still hear, oh, you want a wireless router. I've been you have that to keep Comcast saying it myself. over and yes, over and yes, over. Yes. Well, the other problem is that some things are both wireless and non-wireless. Yes. They say it can be turned off. Can it be turned off? In some cases, but I wouldn't trust that. Yeah. I would say about yeah. good 50% of the time when people say they don't have any wireless in their house, they do. Yes. And they'll say, oh, but Comcast <laughs> said they turned it off. Well, it's not off. Then they, We actually went through with a client in Oakland. Comcast turned it off a minute later was back on. What it was is they were turning off the software, not the hardware. So a lot of things that I have... So you have to be an expert. Right. Well, it comes down to with the radio frequencies, since a lot of things... The easiest thing to do is just to really take care initially to make sure there's no wireless in it. When you get a router, get a router without wireless. When you get a modem, get a modem without wireless. You just... Because otherwise you're always wondering, is it on, is it off? After um, and you can still usually find that kind of equipment if you're looking. That's the biggest thing. To avoid the wireless. Yeah, apps. and the other thing that's very important here is that if you get a computer, it comes outfitted with all kinds of wireless stuff that has to be removed if you yes. don't want it. So uh, we did find with Apple computers that if you go to an Apple dealer, a place that repairs them, it doesn't have to be Apple. They can remove uh, the um, they can remove the board uh, the, that makes it. The airport, the airport card, yeah, the board. airport card, mm-hmm. and they can unplug the Bluetooth. Now, in mm-hmm. laptops, they cannot. Right. That's so you have to turn it off in your system folder. Does it turn off, Michael? Usually it does. Um, what I've seen with laptops has been pretty good. You put it on the uh, airplane mode and it's off. Where I've seen trouble is with smartphones they don't and turn off. iPads. Yeah, they do not turn off. Sometimes I've... I went through with a client where, um, with an iPad, and they said, no, I got it off. And then I tested it. It was on. And then I tested it again. <laughs> and they went through Definitely. six, six like, levels of trying to turn it off. And actually, it turned out they had never turned it off because um, mm-hmm. there's different levels of off. <laughs> and um, Generally and when, not. They generally don't turn right, off. Right, they keep right. looking for a signal. Right. If you really know what you're doing, you can know how to set them so they don't, don't check with the cell tower, so they don't check with the Wi-Fi. Oh, you have to but, tell them exactly what but, not to but do. But you have to know what you're doing. So when it comes, so what I try to do is not have any of those devices, yeah. of course. <laughs> but if you do, yeah. it's getting so complicated that unfortunately you almost have to have some kind of basic radio frequency detector meter. Yes. Because it's it's otherwise you're just always guessing, especially if you're a sensitive person. Um, you almost have to check to make sure things are really off. You can't trust um, what they say. Yes, because they don't. A lot well-meaning people will not even know. They'll, they won't know that the the radio frequency is still being emitted by the hardware, even though the software is making it unintelligible. So so. so um Basically, don't buy anything you can't return in 30 days. Yeah. So you can test it. Right. Very good. And then, of course, when you're getting into things beyond radio frequency devices, anything that might have radio frequencies, you're trying to basically go with the the simplest, like you did with your refrigerator. You're trying to kind of go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Um, A big issue is cars. Oh, Um, yes. Cars are really trouble. People ask me all the time. So please do talk about cars before we get to the house. Oh, (laughs) If you well, can. It's, it's difficult here. I recommend, again, that Boy. you go in with a couple test meters as you test cars, because once you have the car, it's, 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 it's very difficult to do shielding or, or stop things that are coming from the car. But the general idea usually is the simpler the car. I know it's getting tough to do that. Yep. Um, but some, but really sensitive people are still looking for old used, used yeah. cars that they keep going. Or you try them out and you, oh, this, a lot of times the better cars will be like where the engine's a little farther away. When you're really squished in, there's more things close to you. But these days there's also all kinds of radio frequency emitters. I've seen cars where they have, you know, even the temperature sensor control in the ceiling is a little RF device because they don't run the wires anymore for a lot of things. They just put a little RF device in there. So, um, God, it's it's a little it's 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 unfortunately that's kind of the way the world is. So you kind of a lot of times the more bare bones kind of model will have less of that stuff. Well, you, you, some car companies are charging you more if you want all that stuff, but I see that even their temperature things. So I know that the um, the the small Prius, the new small Prius, has it's more money if you buy Bluetooth and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. And so they'll. But mm-hmm. now I see there are these discrete other things. Now we have also the question of a hybrid is basically an inverter. 
-hmm. you're driving around in inverter and as you said solar inverters you have to be really Mm -hmm. i will say that i have found i can say this and i don't mind saying it on the air that we did find an inverter that is quieter Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is more expensive and it is more complex but it is brilliantly quiet yes and that is this is off-grid the sunny island and uh, if it's in grid, you use a Sunny Boy, and they are outstanding. Yeah. I mean, I I don't I'm not getting paid. I just yeah. first had an inverter I couldn't stand. Now I have an inverter I can. So it's it's that much difference. It's quite remarkable. It's good to hear that electronics can be made quieter. Yes, there's no no. We got we talked to Dave Stetzer about this, and he said there's a white paper. He actually sent it to us that shows how to make an inverter quiet, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's just an adjustment. Somebody who knows mm-hmm. how to can open mm-hmm. it up, but this but these are already quieter. Yeah. So, but you can't make electricity without fields. There's going to be some fields. Right, right. So those cars, those hybrids, are right. making electricity. Yes. So they're going to cause a lot of fields yeah. there. So. So hybrids tend to be more trouble because there's yeah. more possibilities. But regular cars have a lot of issues too because even oh. regular engine is running on um, elect- basically an electrical spark, which yep. is a little electromagnetic <laughs> explosion, and there's an alternator. So all cars tend to be an EMF issue, but the hybrids tend to be worse. Yeah. And what about a straight electric car? If it's just electric, is it generating electricity or is it? How well, is that? Well, you have an electric motor, so yeah. electric motors make fields. Motors also. make fields. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ouch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we have to wait. When you have electricity, you're going to have these things. It's just a matter of how cleanly it is done. Mm-hmm. And well, like what I've seen with things like the, the ballasts for um, electronic uh, fluorescent lighting um, or, um, or for LEDs, yep. they can be done much cleaner, too. But it has just a little bit of cost. And so typically, as these things get into big production, they might take that nickel and save that nickel, you know. So... Typically, when it gets into big um, uh, production of devices, they do enough reducing of the noise so that they're not upsetting the FCC standards for interference with other electronics, but they're not doing anything beyond that. So things tend to be dirty by our human standards. Um, it, uh, <laughs> so we've talked about general these sort of general approaches to looking at the fields in your house and in your car and your office and that so not having a smart meter opting out just to let people know also if you are making less than i think it's thirty one thousand eight hundred dollars a year you can qualify for the care program and that makes it not expensive at all to get rid of a smart meter otherwise they are going to charge you uh, and they're trying to do other th- nasty uh, the mm-hmm. politics of this, which is not what we're talking about today, but we will cover it, is so awful um, that it's not even there's no illusion anymore of a democracy in this country. The people who are in charge of the uh, the new guy at the public utilities, uh, Cal, Cal Public Utilities, is, is a real villain. Uh, and the, the guy FCC, I mean, it's all just uh, terrifying. I should uh, just mention that you're listening to your own health and fitness. I'm Lena Berman. Jeff Fawcett is sitting here by me. And uh, Michael Neward is our guest. He is a um, sort of an elect. Uh, electric, electrical engineer, you could say, contractor, and he works uh, in remediation to help people reduce fields in the house and the home and protect themselves. Uh, we've given out two websites for you. Uh, could you give them out again? Oh, sure. Um, EMFcenter.com is the commercial website, and EMFinfo.org is the informational website. Great. Um, so we've gone through some of these things. Um, could, I me- could I mention something? Oh, you always can, of um, course. Just finishing with the radio frequencies, what a lot of people don't realize is, yes, there's smart meters, your, your neighbors, perhaps yours, but a lot of people don't realize their own radio frequency sources, and the most frequent yes. one is the cordless phones in the oh, house. God. And especially the yeah. decked phones, which are fairly powerful digital type of technology. So... If you want to re- if you want to make your home cleaner, the most important thing probably is to get rid of the cordless phones. Go back to the old corded phones. I like I like the corded speaker phones, like the big old person phones. They're that still sit there. no, but they're yeah, st- they're, they're still, still being AT and T and um, and Panasonic both make really good. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the other thing to really be help people be aware of is that um, the wireless internet, uh, the routers, wireless routers, are. Or something. Even if you're only using it five minutes a day, the router is emitting the RF all Constant. the time. And that's where the most health effects are. Being and caused. one of the worst things I've seen related to that is pretty much now, whether you're getting a um, 
whether you're getting a um, cable service for your internet or over the telephone line, those companies typically will have a package where you get some kind of gateway piece of equipment. That gateway, um, whether it will typically be a wireless system, even if you put all wires up to it, you have an Ethernet cable go into it and a TV cable, the box itself will still do wireless. That's scurrilous. So you really... So after the after the we're dealing with the cordless phones, the next thing is to, is to work with your internet um, company, whether it's the cable company or the telephone company, to get equipment that's not wireless. You can do some shielding of the box, but the shielding is never perfect, and it's much better. You can still do it. It's carried I did on it. the line. Yeah. Right, and and that's it's another it's another interesting thing. But what I've what I've also seen is when you have a, one of these gateways. This is the place where the, the Internet signal is coming in from the utility. It also has electricity coming in from the power company. That's right. So this is one of the places where things kind of tend to get mixed up. So what I've seen, and I've seen some houses I've worked on, we've got all the fields really low. The wiring fields are low. There's no – we've done shielding. There's um, We've done a great job of all the different EMFs. Lo and behold, person picks up their telephone, and we're, I'm actually reading a body voltage of a half a volt or a bolt on it, and it turns out – it was coming through this wireless gate, or this wired, even a wired gateway in this case, coming through that gateway, and then the low frequency power line signal was coupling onto the onto the phone line wire. Absolutely. So it's like the dirty electricity can go both ways. You can mm-hmm. have high frequencies going on to your low frequency fields, but that you can have these low frequencies going to the high frequency fields. So. Always, it's uh, unfortunately it's the way things are going. So for some people who are really sensitive, sometimes you just go back to the old phone system and don't even have an Ethernet type of phone. But I never know how that's going to go. It's hard to predict how these you things mean, are going to cross over. You mean don't use a VoIP, don't use a, a voice over yeah. internet protocol. Yeah. Oh no, you're right, and they're very noisy because the adapter. The other thing is that the more AC adapters you have in your house, the more noise you're going to have in general. And yes. if your phone, yes. corded or otherwise, is a caller ID phone, you've got another AC adapter. Yes, so the all more of those, of those they, and the other problem is the decked phones yes. or any of the cordless phones yeah, yeah. have a base station. So you've got an antenna in your house, and if yes. you're trying to shield, it's reflecting stuff all over. So you you've can't got shield a, if you're doing it's a those tower. Things. It's a tower. You've got a tower, and also people are buying boosters and putting them in their house to yes. increase their. It's not enough that the wireless goes 350 feet. They have to have it even stronger and bigger. Right. Um, so you've got a tower in your house. And then the deck phones, it turns out, according to the research that's coming out, there's, an ex- there's a kind of um, concomitant reaction between the wireless uh, router, your uh, smart meter and all these other fields and when you put the deck phone on there too it increases the other ones exponentially so it makes everything stronger and people get sicker mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. anecdotally I am seeing a lot of cancer mm-hmm. happening very fast in mm-hmm. people and young mm-hmm. people with no history so yes. it's you don't want a constant the, the other thing that I've noticed that you've uh, pointed out to me too that was very important to know about is that oddly enough if you're on a nice quiet corded phone which is hard to find these days because the phone companies are using all kinds of equipment so and there's also the phone lines are now in antenna so that even the corded phones are noisy yes but then if you talk to somebody on a cell phone it's noisier still which is very odd but somehow just the mm-hmm. other kinds of th- devices that people are using that are getting carried on the phone lines when you're calling or all the other people mm-hmm. who are using other kinds of phones in their houses who are on the same system it increases the noise on your phone yeah, I don't know about that. It is, it is as you as we have these um, Seems to digital types of phones. Yeah. Even the signal that's coming is digital, and it's not it's not a natural kind of signal. Not and indeed. the sounds that are made, they're trying to approximate natural sounds, but it's not natural either. So there's a lot of things in there when you go digital. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, let's move on to low EMF wiring. Yeah. There's um. When you're thinking about what you can do to have a, a more EMF-free kind of house, after you do the radio frequencies elimination, um, the next thing is what are the other sources that are all electric power related, especially where you sleep, unplugging things around you. That's just easy stuff to do. Keeping some distance from the refrigerator where you're working. Um, 
after you do those kind of things, then you're starting to get to where it can be helpful to use test meters to see what's going on. For instance, um, you can have a wiring issue in a building um, that can give you very high magnetic fields, much higher than is needed for the cause of cancer in the studies, and you would never know it because it's just an electrician's wiring error. Mm -hmm. Um, It's called stray electricity or net current. It's where electricity sometimes flows through the wrong wires. Um, it's something I work on all the time, so I say it all the time. And you, electricians don't know it because it doesn't trip breakers. Um, but electricity sometimes is going through water pipes, gas pipes, all kinds of things. Oh dear. So that you would find with a, what we call a Gauss meter. It's a meter that detects magnetic fields. And you can go to emfcenter.com and, and see what those are a little bit. Um, and the other half of it is the electric field from wires and everything, too. And that's where that body voltage meter can be helpful, especially take a look at where you sleep. Test, you know, what I like, I like to be, um, if I'm sleeping, I want my voltage on my skin to be, and this is AC volts. It's the same kind of volts that when you measure the voltage, 120 volts um, on your wiring. Um, the typical voltage in someone in their house is going to be half a volt, a volt, two volts. That's real typical. Um, but if you really want to sleep well, I find if you get down to about a tenth of a volt, 0.1 volt or less, that's usually pretty good for most well, people. Well, it's usually best to just turn off the breaker to the bedroom or, yes. or if you're doing new construction, do a kill switch. Yes. Yeah. One of the things, the difficulty with that is it's a good approximation to turn off the bedroom circuit. But you never know what other wires are near the bedroom. Um, I have a, I, I had a client who, um, was very EMF sensitive and it turned out 14 circuits went right under her bed for, they were feeding her house in the next unit. We're all right under Good her bed. Job. And it was just, so to get her feels low in that room, she had to turn off 14 circuits. It wasn't oh, just her own bedroom because everything went, went under her bed sort of oh, thing. My. So that's where using a meter can be helpful. Uh, cause you can, you never know where the electrician ran wires and it's easier to test. And so what you do, for instance, if you're using a body volt meter and you're in your bed and you're testing, wow, I have three volts on me here. That's kind of high. You go out, you turn off the power for your house. It'll probably go down to like 0.06 or something. Yeah. You really feel like low. you're camping. Yeah. And often and sensitive people will feel that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and that's also a clue if you can turn off the power and you feel better or if there's a power failure and you notice you like it. Oh, most people do. <laughs> most people do. A lot of people are, are kind of irritated. Oh, my freezer is warming up. But but other than that, if you feel better, that's yeah. a good sign that this is important for you. You're no kidding. So if you if you do have an electric field, for instance, at your bed and you turn off the power, then you do, what you do is you go on and just turn on one circuit at a time and you find out which circuits are making that field in that room. And when you know that, you can know you can turn those off. Typically, it's going to be that one or two breakers for that bedroom, but it could be like that client, 14. And that's a kind of a cheap way to reduce those fields, at least where you sleep. All right, so you're designing a new house. You're building a house. I mean, I think the most obvious thing is that you keep all of the uh, things that are sort of noisy, like a refrigerator, just in terms of regular fields, has the highest, usually the highest reading of anything in the house. This is not radio yes. frequency unless you have the good luck to have one of those fancy new refrigerators with all this digital <laughs> and, and antennas yes. in it. So you build your, your kitchen and, and all the mechanical stuff you put in a corner of the house, and then you put your bedroom as far from there as you possibly can. Yes. That's number one. Yes. Right? That distance for all of these EMFs, distance is king, yeah. often better than shielding. Um, what other uh, things uh, do you do you recommend? Oh, and if you're doing some new wiring or you're repairing or, or doing a remodel, rather than use Romex, you can use a shielded cable called MC cable. Electricians know about it. It's not perfect. You re- you reduce the magnetic fields from the wiring a bit, the way that the wires inside are spun around each other. But the shielding, the armor, um, captures most of the electric field. Again, it's not perfect, but it's quite a reduction. Um, so... Um, if you have a normal house with Romex wiring, typically you might be sitting at a table, you might be at a volt or two. Um, if you have this kind of wiring, typically you'll be like a tenth of a volt or less. And for sense, some sensitive people, that's still not enough. But for most people, it's a drastic improvement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there any uh, reason to buy the more expensive MC shielding material i mean there's an aluminum one and there's also i think what is it steel or something and it's right Mm -hmm. somebody said that the problem is aluminum has a tendency can it melt in a fire i'm not i don't know oh aluminum has probably a lower melting temperature um but you don't want to be in a house that's melting anyway right right you probably want to be out Out. it's it's, yeah yeah, it's usually the wiring is shot whether it's melting or not yeah yeah Um, there's um 
whether it's steel or um, steel or aluminum is usually not a big difference for fields that I can measure, and usually they're kind of similar costs. Yeah. Yeah. What well, metal roofs versus a composite roof, but having mm-hmm. shielding in the roof, uh, having some kind of there's a wonderful uh-huh. product called Denny Foil we discovered, which is a vapor barrier and a reflective barrier so it gets the heat to come back, or the cold to not, it, hence, but it's uh, yes. an aluminum Blessing heating. or curse, depending. Well, also, as you said, if you're producing fields in the house, but what about from outside, you're trying to protect the house from please, you're going to tell me that it's not good to do it that way. I should have it, done it a metal really, roof. Really, it's the same thing oh, with the God. shield materials. Um, but you've got win- if you've got windows for things to escape out of. Yes. Oh, so this is where you get into the different kinds of radio frequencies. And for these digital fields, that metal in the roof or the Denny foil will tend to just reflect and be great. But when you start getting into the lower frequency radio frequencies, like EM radio signals from a radio tower, or you start to get into the electric fields from the wiring, for instance, now this metal starts to interact with it quite a lot. And so what happens is an ungrounded metal roof or ungrounded Denny foil in some cases, will make the electric fields at these lower frequencies worse. Um, there's a house in Petaluma I worked on where we did all the shielded wiring and everything was great. And then, lo and behold, the upstairs had like 10 volts. And it's like, what the heck? And there's a power line outside, and it turned out that the metal insulation that he had put in was attracting the electric fields from the power line sure. and then spreading it through the whole house. And so the way we solved that, we did some shielding with the shielded paint for some of it that we couldn't get to, but everything we could access, we grounded. And then that metal became a shield rather than an amplifier for those low frequencies. Yeah, well, it's, I think one of the reasons people are thinking about shielding roofs is because of the, we are going to cover this soon, the um, thing, the next wave is going to be lower satellites and drones and things delivering Wi-Fi to even remote areas where people have moved to get away from this stuff. So yeah, yeah. you think about metal. Yep. in the roof but um, we're getting close to running out of time um, I'm just wondering if there's one last thing you want to make sure that you say we've got about a minute left here yeah I really want to encourage people to consider that the EMFs may be affecting them more than they realize pay really attention to how you feel in different places for me it's like I go out in nature I feel better the power goes out I feel better because if you have those kind of situations you feel better outside or where there's less electricity or away from the Wi-Fi router that is a big clue yeah it is it's hard to, you, there's so many fields around it's, it's unless you start paying attention to that what I found when people um, when I turn off the power and they realize the fields are off or we turn off the router then they start to get it because you can, now you realize, that, yeah, it, yeah. The, power, the yeah. fuel has been reduced. Yeah. A lot of people are affected that don't realize it. Yep. So I really want to thank you, Michael, uh, for joining us today. This was a wealth of information. Thank you so much. Um, we'll put your both of your websites on our website so people can look for that. So Michael Newert, thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you all for listening. I'm Lena Berman. Visit our website, yourownhealthandfitness.org, for easier extended access to our over 500 archive shows with our library card feature. Find a stream of this week's show for free, our book, and lots more at yourownhealthandfitness.org. And if you want to reach us, uh, please email us at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at yourownhealthandfitness.org. Your Own Health and Fitness is produced by Lena Berman and Dr. Jeffrey Fawcett. Remember, being informed not only protects your health, it protects your freedom. This is Brian Edwards Teekert, very excited to be working on Upfront, weekdays at 7 a.m. with a talented team. I'm Sonali Kolhatkar. Each morning we bring you the latest from the streets of Oakland to the halls of the state capitol, from Los Angeles to Afghanistan. We deliver in-depth analysis, hard-hitting interviews, and debates on the issues that affect our lives. And I'm Eileen Alfandari, working with the KKFA News Team to bring you breaking news from across the state, the region, and the world. We'll keep you updated on the latest throughout the morning on KTFA. It's Upfront, a statewide collaboration that brings you information that matters. That's every weekday morning at 7 a.m. right after Democracy Now! Keep it locked to KPFA 94.1 FM in the Bay Area, KFCF 88.1 FM in the Central Valley, or listen online at kpfa.org. I'm Brian edwards Teeker. See you at 7. The KPFA Community Advisory Board is holding an informational community meeting 
about the current state and possible future of the Pacifica network, including KPFA, its sister stations, and 200 affiliates around the country. The meeting is free, open to the public, and will be held on July 16th from 2 to 4 p.m. at Sports Basement, located at 2727 Milvia Street in Berkeley in the Community Room. Presenters will update attendees on Pacifica Finance, Governance, and Programming. There will be a time for discussion and feedback, which the cab will share with station management, 